Legislative proposals up in Austin as lawmakers are working again up in Austin. Every two years they go up there and try to devise new law. Uh, among the proposals related to education, they would like to grade schools A through F, for example. You know, if it works for kids, it works for the schools, I guess. Uh, some and other legislative proposal. Let's talk about that right now. President and CEO of Idea Public Schools, Tom Torgelson. I need to preface this by saying I am a board member at Idea Public Schools. Actually, Tom, uh, I think recently we talked about a change in the titles for the staff there. I know Joanne Gama is the superintendent now. And did, did your title change over at Idea? Are you now the uh, I don't know the overlord of education or something like that? What's your new title at, Grand at Idea? Grand Poobah. Oh, there we go. Grand Poobah of education. That's right. Joanne is the president and superintendent, and yeah. I'm merely the uh, executive chairman and CEO. Merely. Merely. <laughs> at any rate, though, this is a busy, busy legislative session. Yeah. We've got vouchers. We've got in-state tuition. We've got the A through F thing. Decriminalizing um, truancy. I saw that one this morning. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, um, I'm you know, really in favor of the decriminalization of truancy. I mean, we have uh, young people, particularly young African-American, Hispanic Students uh, are, are end up being in the truant courts more often, and we have these young people who are already entering adulthood, 18, 19, 20, with some sort of interaction with the criminal justice system, and it's just it's not a criminal issue um, in in my mind at all. Okay. So you know, let's let police let's let police officers police, and let's let schools educate kids. And my whole motto has always been that you have to run schools that are so inspiring and so motivating that kids would come even if they didn't have to. Yeah. That's a good point. Okay, grading schools A through F. Some say it's good enough for kids, it's good enough for schools. What say you? Yeah, I mean, I think on balance, uh, the more that we have transparency in our accountability system, the better. Um, I'm in favor of A through F. Um, you know, I think that we'll have a lot of schools and affluent communities who probably aren't adding a lot of value, but their kids uh, are doing well on state tests that are A, and, and everybody will be patting themselves on the back. And you'll have a number of schools that are C's, that have done a lot to get kids who couldn't read uh, to, to reading just below grade level who have added a lot more value than those suburban schools. And, you know, the, the rating system may not may not be nuanced enough to show uh, how much kids are improving in different schools. But I, I think overall when parents have information that's clear and transparent and simple, that, that that's a good thing. All right. Uh, vouchers. Where do you stand on vouchers? And that looks like it's moving toward potential passage up in Austin. It was moving fast last week. I mean, we'll see. You know, it's arguable that the lieutenant governor is the most powerful elected official in Texas right now. Um, this has been one of his big causes. He's been very, very engaged in this issue, more so uh, than the lieutenant governor often would get involved in a specific issue. Um, I think this will sail to the Senate. Um, you know, I think it's going to face a lot more opposition in, in, in the House. I'm not confident and will leave the house. Overall, vouchers means more opportunity and more choice for parents. Uh, in principle, I'm for vouchers. My big beef with this bill is it's a, it's, it's a tuition subsidy. So parents who need it the most, that low-income parents whose kids are trapped in those D and F schools, if we get that rating system, it's still going to be out of reach for them. So we're going to end up subsidizing private schools for a lot of middle and upper middle uh, income folks, and I just don't know that that's the best use of taxpayer dollars. Tom, Tim Sullivan here. Um, I guess what charter school-specific bills are you hoping will pass this session? Yeah, we've got two bills uh, that have numbers, but I won't bore your audience with them. Uh, one of them is providing facilities funding for charter schools. So if you've been around, you're getting great results, you've got good financial audits, um, then we think that it's totally appropriate for the state to provide some facility funding for our students. We get about one-third less per kid per year than, uh, than, than, than that kid would get if they went to McAllen ISD or Edinburgh ISD. Well, as soon as they sign up for Idea Public Schools, their state funding drops, and a lot of that's the facilities piece. So that would really allow us to do some, some, some very cool, very special things with our students. Is the, the facilities uh, legislation, is that similar to the, what, the maintenance one that the public schools, the other public schools are watching, they're hoping for? That's part of it. It's um, it's a little bit different take on 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 kind of the same deal, but okay. um, but yeah, we we, we we think that that the facilities issues a, a really really big deal, and that could um, that could help us. Which which brings me back to the you know eight hundred thousand pound two thousand pound gorilla. Yeah. It's it's in the room. Okay, look, in McAllen, they've got this bond proposal that it's it's up for vote in May. 
uh, almost 300 million bucks. Okay. Can you please explain the difference between, let's say, Idea Public Schools that is able to bond its new construction without having to go to taxpayers and increase a tax base and still receives less funding per kid? How is it possible that a successful charter school program can bond its future growth, the new butts that are coming to the seats, and and pay that off without a credit rating that is as supposedly as high as McAllen's. How are they able to do that versus a school district, a traditional school district, old school district like McAllen, that is going back to voters and saying, hey, can you uh, help us foot this bill? Well, I mean, quite simply, we pay our bonds back with, uh, with our overall operating revenue. So, so is the McAllen School District not allowed to do that under state law, or are they just doing things differently? No school district, very few school districts pay back bonds with operating revenues. Um, Why not? Because it's not allowed under law? No, just uh, it's just not the culture in the district. That <laughs> charter schools have to do it because otherwise we wouldn't have any facilities. Um, but, but you know, look, in, in, in McAllen ISD's defense, I mean, Idea Public Schools, we get out there, we raise a lot of money. Uh, we raised $30 million last year, private money. We were on track to raise about the same amount this year. So, you know, it's not that we are necessarily doing more with less. We're just having to find different sources of... of, of it's not of, the culture. What would be the impact if they did away with that requirement for charter schools? Like, apparently, you know, McAllen ISD doesn't have to, uh, you know, go to the taxpayers uh, to, or to get reimbursed or... Look, you know I what I mean? Say this. I, 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 I'm not going to comment on the McAllen issue specifically, but I have visited yeah. schools. Well, public schools in general. I have visited schools across the world. I have seen schools and nations that are outperforming us, I mean, by an amount that is embarrassing. But none of them, none of them beat us when it comes to facilities. America may not have the top 10 or even the top 15 schools in the world. But man, we got the best football stadiums. We got mm -hmm. the best buildings. We got the best libraries. We got the shiny and the class. biggest freaking budgets as well. Um, we put a lot of money into facilities, and I just think overall across the country, it's a massive miscellany. Uh, all right, Tom, people. thank you, thank you for your time. That is uh, Tom Torgelson. He is with Idea Public Schools. Our guest on seven ten KURV.